Welcome to 10 8. 10 8 is a more personal and journal style series of articles by myself that will center around police management, criminology, and policing. The articles will not be the typical citation driven essay style that I use. For those articles, please see my Medium page, uh, published books such as Amazon, especially The Business of Policing, Volume 1, Crimes and Punishments in the 21st Century, or scientific published literature highlighted by The Business of Policing, Volume 2, Managing Ethical Police Conduct. Here I will post frequent thought streams on my personal philosophies. Thanks for listening in. September 15th, 2020. Police respond to violence. Often cited in the media in casual conversations is that there is an unjust disparity between the number of black males in the country and the percentage of them killed during interactions with the police. A necessary caveat is that I do not wish to promote the concept of race being real. Still, it remains necessary to respond to the socially constructed concept. None of this has anything to actually do with race. It cannot, because race is not an objective determiner of anything. Nonetheless, the idea exists that black men are disproportionately subjected to state violence. Therefore, this is the framing that I am responding to. Within the argument of racism in policing are two things that must be true. First, the idea that an agency such as mine, majority black, in a majority black city, with a black city council, black police commissioner, black mayor, black state's attorney, black attorney general, and black POTUS is racist. The term racist loses all meaning at that point. Second, and the focus of this writing, that police respond to and interact with the public based upon the percentage of their existence in society. Ridiculous. As if police should spend an equal amount of time policing the elderly, children, hospital patients, each socially constructed race, each ethnicity, sex, or gender, the list would be endless. Would protests erupt when we find disparities in that police arrest able-bodied people disproportionately? Now, Dr. Wood, I don't like the way this sounds. I have heard you preach on your high horse about systemic racism in policing. Why are you flipping now, you grifter, trumper, racist? No, no, no. Let me explain. One of my key frustrations with policing is that society as a whole denies things that are obvious and on the surface true when it comes to beliefs about policing. At the same time, they think they understand the complex and nuanced field of criminology despite lacking the most basic knowledge. Patrol police spend most of their time in administrative activities. Public interaction with the police comes in one of only two ways. They were called for by you or another community member or they observed an offense during the course of their duties. These observed offenses are known to me as on views. Specialized units such as narcotics, felony detectives, traffics, and such spend most of their efforts with on view offenses and rarely handle direct 911 calls. Typically, the calls they deal with are long-term complaint calls, speeding, drugs, gangs, and so forth. These units are not often on the news clips of excessive force, which is a different discussion for another day. Now, there is a lot of drug possession among the moneyed of Wall Street. We can all agree on that, right? Most likely, just as much, if not more, than street markets. It is because Wall Street is white, or white adjacent, and police are racist that these criminals are not arrested. Obviously. Obviously not. I would have loved, loved, loved to do those raids. Send a bunch of pansy rich boys to booking, going all through their house and seeing what else I can find, digging through their personal computers and security systems. Oh my, it would have been marvelous. Why did I never get the chance to do that? You already know. I was not there. Why was I not there? You already know. Police respond to violence and complaints. Dr. Wood, it sounds like you're saying that black people are more violent. Are you really saying that? Keeping in mind that I live in the scientifically accurate worldview that race is not real, and this is not my framing. In America, it is another prima facie truth that yes, if you are a raced realist as a group, 
black people are significantly more violent than everyone else in the U.S. And this is the source of the systemic injustices that exist within policing. At the demand of the people of the community, police respond to violence. Police can only see so far, and while in the vicinity of violent events, they look for crimes, things out of place, and violations of the social contract. Typical, everyday, ordinary people that live and work around the violence are physically located where the police look and are unfairly placed under state scrutiny. This will happen regardless of race. It is geographic proximity to perpetrators of violence. The most common black person near black violence receives excessive state scrutiny. Are you white and close to black violence geography? Similar story. Are you black around white violence? My pattern is developing. White in a neighborhood of white violence? You guessed it. Same old story. The current result is a gross double victimization for the vast majority of black Americans residing near violence. Not only are they victimized by the violence, they're also victimized by our response to the violence. Just from a factual standpoint, to fix this situation, we must either change the philosophy that police respond to violence and complaints, or the conditions that demand police attention. The former does not seem to be a realistic or logical possibility. Ultimately, this is up to you, to society. For the police, I go into detail in other writings about the causations of violence and crime, but we must focus on these causes and what we can do about them while advocating for actions in the areas we cannot influence. For example, we can eliminate the lead poisoning that causes violence in resource-stricken and disproportionately black neighborhoods. We can help create local stability by being willful servants, but it is not our place to address fatherless homes, the welfare state, politics, or the inequality of resources that are strong contributors to creating the conditions that call for police attention. For today, the police respond to violence and complaints, not the proportionality of demographics. <laughs>